Hey everybody, I'm Desiree Swift and in this video I'm going to be talking about idols and about identity, especially identity as children of God. But before I get into that, I want to show you a couple items. This is a finisher's medal, although it's made out of wood, but it's still called a medal from a run that I did. It was an endurance run, which means lots of miles and I just absolutely loved it. This, don't be afraid. It's made out of plastic, it's called a blue gun, and it's for firearms training. The reason I'm showing you these two things is because they represent my identity for quite a while, for years. They were part of my identity, running and endurance sports and being a firearms instructor. It's a, it was a cool job, but these two things became idols for me and they became part of my identity. We are told in the Bible, we are supposed to be following the Ten Commandments, which is about how we should love God and love others. And one way that we should love God is by not having any idols. And an idol doesn't mean that it's a golden statue sitting on my shelf that I worship, although that can be an idol, but I don't have any of those. But an idol, the definition of it is anything that we put above God. So how we spend our time, what we re read about or watch videos about, what we post about on social media, what we spend more of our time talking about than God. So am I reading the Bible more or am I reading books about what I'm interested in or reading articles online? Do I spend more time talking about my interest and my opinions or do I spend more time talking about God? And as my identity should be a child of God, so it's fine to have opinions, it's fine to have interests, but I always need to remember that my first identity is as a child of God. We all see right now, I'm sure, especially with this political season that we're in and the COVID-19 and all of that, that we could get pretty split on these, these divisive topics. And I see in a way how I've turned some of them into idols and part of my identity. So some of the topics uh, that we could choose as our opinions and our identity and turning into idols could be political party, or it could be if we support masks or if we don't, if we support the police or if we criticize them, if we support vaccines or if we don't, if we say, think we should only say BLM or if we can say all lives matter. These are some pretty touchy topics and they are something that can stir up a lot of hate. Uh, I notice myself that I have chosen one side or the other. Sometimes I, I think that my side is right and the other person's is wrong. <laughs> that is not the heart of Jesus. So I, I am sorry about that and I don't want to do that anymore. And I'm refocusing my attention back on the fact that I should not have any idols and that my identity should be as a child of God. Those topics and those opinions should not be higher than God. And we should not use them as a way to post things that put our opinions above those of others. Philippians 2, 2 through 4. I have some Bible verses that I want to read for us. Then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and of one mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interest, but each of you to the interest of others. Another one in Philippians, just a few verses down. Philippians 2 verses 14 through 15. Do everything without grumbling or arguing so that you may become blameless and pure children of God without fault in a warped and crooked generation. Then you will shine among them like stars in the darkness. And then the last one that's always a good reminder for me is Matthew 6, 33, where Jesus is talking about how we don't have to worry because he's going to take care of us. But we need to seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and everything will be given to us as well. The Bible is filled with so much wisdom and I need to make sure that I spend more time reading that book than I do 
debating things or reading other topics or articles or books. I'm not sure if any of you have struggled with what I've talked about, about idols and identity and putting personal opinions above other people. But what is so cool is that every second we are alive is another opportunity for us to make the right choices, for us to follow the commands in God's word to love one another. There's an awesome song on the radio right now that every single time I hear it, it's like, oh, I just wish that could happen in our lives. It's by Josh Wilson, and it is called Revolutionary. And I want to wrap up this video by reading you some of the lyrics. Maybe you're not like me. Maybe we don't agree. Maybe that doesn't mean we got to be enemies. Maybe we just get brave, take a big leap of faith, call a truce so me and you can find a better way. Let's take some time, open our eyes, look and listen. We're going to find we're more alike than we are different. Why does kindness seem revolutionary? When did like, we let hate get so ordinary? Let's turn it around, flip the script, judge slow, love quick. God help us get revolutionary. I'm turning the TV down, drowning their voices out because I believe that you and me can find some common ground. See, maybe I'm not like you, but I'll walk a mile in your shoes if it means I might see the world the way you do. Let's take some time, open our eyes, look and listen. We're gonna find we are more alike than we are different. What would Jesus do? He would love first, he would love first. What would Jesus do? He would love first, he would love first. So we should love first. Why does kindness seem revolutionary? When did we let hate get so ordinary? Let's turn it around, flip the script, judge slow, love quick. God help us get revolutionary. That is my hope and prayer that we can be revolutionary, that we can turn those lyrics and that song into reality in every single one of our lives, that I can turn those lyrics into my reality in my life. I love you guys and I'll catch you next time.